Hello, everyone. Uh, I'd like uh, to talk to you about machine learning. And uh, uh, in a sense, uh, when you hear about neural networks, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and so on, uh, it might seem uh, that it's a lot of magic and that you need to go to MATFIS and uh, study a lot of courses and so on and so on to even start understanding what's going on. And what I'd like to do in this talk is to show you that it's actually uh, not near as, mass, uh, as much magic as it, uh, as it appears. That uh, the principles behind it are actually pretty simple. And uh, even you in the audience, you can uh, start pretty easily to, uh, to build some simple models and solve some uh, simple tasks um, in your daily, daily life uh, uh, using machine learning. That there is, it's not nearly as, uh, as an advanced thing as, as it may seem, uh, at, least for the, at least for the easier tasks that are out there, the more standard ones. Uh, so let's try to solve a task. Uh, uh, I think one of the easiest ways to explain machine learning is using uh, so-called natural language processing. That basically means uh, machine learning contexts. Uh, you have a bunch of sentences, a paragraph, a page, or document, or just a, just a single sentence, or just a few words, and uh, you'd like to, to tell something about it automatically. Uh, something non-trivial, not just number of characters, but something that, uh, that's connected to its meaning, maybe. Uh, so one popular task is classifying movie reviews. Uh, there is a big data set. There is, a, I think most of you know the website IMDB, uh, which is a database of movies, and uh, you can upload reviews there, and uh, maybe you are running some similar website where people are posting reviews. And uh, often they are also, they are also uh, adding, some, adding some numeric, numeric, uh, 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 so, so, so some numeric rank, some numeric ra rating to the movie, like seven stars out of ten, or two stars out of ten, or something, and uh, then then uh, they are writing a review, and it might be useful to 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 be able to guess from the review whether they like the movie or not. Uh, so if you look at those two uh, at those two at those two reviews here, one of them, this is one amazing movie, and so on and so on. Uh, sounds pretty positive. And uh, the other one, I hope that the makers of this crap have their day, day jobs because this film sucked. I think that one is pretty obviously negative. Uh, sometimes it's less obvious, of course, but a lot of those, those, those reviews are actually written when people feel strongly emotionally about what they just saw, so, 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 so it can be actually pretty, pretty obvious. Uh, and. Uh, I wonder if you have any ideas right now, how would you approach this task if you were to write a program which would try to guess whether, whether, whether it's, uh, the review is positive or negative? Do, any, in the audience, any idea, any quick idea in two, three words, how would you approach it? Keywords. Keywords. I like that idea. It goes in the dire exactly the direction uh, that I want. Uh, so. Uh, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's come back to this. Uh, let's come back to this this one later. But uh, that's a great question. Uh, just on keywords, could we be could we be able to guess whether a review is positive or negative? Uh, so uh, if our keywords, if we look at a bunch of reviews and write down words which seem to indicate positivity and negativity, uh, it's actually pretty easy. You can do things like amazing, or, or crap, or great, or sucked, uh, and so on, and so on. And uh, yeah, it, it's actually a totally viable approach. The only downside is if I were to do this manually, I would get pretty bored pretty soon, and uh, uh, I don't know how many words would I need to write down to, cover, to get a good coverage of, of reviews. So it would be nice to have a machine to do this particular thing for me, to write down those words. And maybe some of them are less positive than others. Maybe good is less positive than amazing, and so on and so on. And it would be nice to, to have those numbers automatically. And that's actually exactly what machine learning would do here. 
So let's take a look at how we would use this in this way conceptually, but just using machine learning to figure out which of the words are good and which of the words are bad, and to figure out how to, how to guess the, the sentiment of the whole review uh, based on this. So uh, in this talk, there will be no equations. Uh, no mathematical formulas, but still I'll just 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 phrase the problem the way a machine learning uh, machine learning guy would would do it. So we have a so-called data set. So we have a bunch of examples which uh, which we can download from IMDb. There is actually some people who already did this. Uh, so so they prepared a nice tarball for us, uh, and we can just download that. And it has uh, something like 10,000 10, reviews. Uh, and uh, uh, so we have a lot of examples, and what's important for each of those examples, we know the right answer, whether the rev review was positive or negative. Those people who prepared the data said they actually looked at the star rating and correlated with that, and that's what they used to, uh, to, 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 to uh, uh, that, that's what they use as labels. So that's pretty important. We don't need just a lot of examples to, to learn on, but we also need the right answers for those examples. Uh, and uh, then what we are going to do is uh, we are uh, going to do, uh, we are going to build a model, a machine learning model. And the model is essentially a mathematical formula. Uh, and this formula, what it, what it would do is uh, given some mathematical input, it would try to estimate some kind of numerical output. And then uh, our job is uh, uh, first to figure out how to encode the review mathematically, then how to, how to encode, the, uh, encode the, the output uh, mathematically. That one is actually pretty easy. We can just say, uh, make this formula output zero. If it's, bad, if it's bad, make this uh, formula output one if it's good, or something very, very simple like this. And then the last thing is we need to figure out how the formula itself should, lie, uh, sh sh should look like. And uh, in this formula, we'll have some coefficients, uh, some, 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 some extra numerical parameters. And, uh, and uh, the, the training process, which actually uses this labeled data set, is just, uh, is just finding good values for those coefficients. Uh, this sounds pretty abstract, but we'll get very concrete very soon. No worries. Uh, so there is many approaches to do this, and the one that we are choosing right now is actually very simple, and the modern natural language processing uh, has a lot more sophisticated approaches. But this one is actually super powerful, even though it's so simple. It's so-called back of words representation, and that just means we are just looking at which words are present. We don't care about the ordering of the words or anything. We are just looking whether this particular word from our vocabulary is present in this review, and based on that, we are making some decision based on which words are just present there. Uh, how do we do that mathematically? How do we encode, encode the words mathematically? Uh, one popular way is to, 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 uh, to use so-called uh, one-hot encoding, and what this actually does is, uh, is uh, we have some kind of vocabulary, like 5,000 words, the most popular words, which are present in those reviews. And we make an array from those words. And then for each word, we use a very long list, of, uh, which is as long as the vocabulary. And this has zeros everywhere, except a single one at the point of that word. Uh, what's nice about this? is uh, for example to uh, for example to uh, uh, to uh, get a representation of a whole sentence we can just do a maximum of vectors for the individual for the individual words or in some variants we can we can we can sum them together and uh, and the other nice thing is that what we can do then is we can just uh, uh, we can we can just do some kind of weighted average of this uh, in our particular case, this one-hot encoding representation uh, would look some, something like this for a very small vocabulary, of course. Uh, if we have some, some, some review, some positive, the positive example of the review, it would look like this. We would have ones at uh, the, the points of words which are present, zeros at points of words which aren't present. And, uh, and then the easiest way 
exactly the way that we talked about at the beginning of this talk to determine the sentiment would be to multiply each element of this list above uh, by some kind of parameter. We would call this the word weight. And then we can, we, we, do a, we just sum together all those multiplications. And what would happen is we would have a very high, very high numbers, very high positive, yeah, well, very, 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 very high numbers uh, for positive words and very low numbers, very near, very, very nearby zero uh, for, for negative numbers. Or, well, actually, very negative, sorry, sorry about that, yeah. Uh, so, so, so we would have positive numbers for positive words, negative, uh, negative numbers for negative words, and what would happen is, uh, is uh, presence uh, uh, of, uh, of positive words would uh, bring the whole sum up, and the presence of negative words would obviously, when summing things up, bring the, bring the whole sentiment down. So we do s just a kind of weighted sum of, of, uh, of those coefficients based on which words are present, which aren't. It's a pretty simple idea. And that's the network that we are gonna build. So, yeah, let's try, let's try to do it. Uh, the first stumble that we would, we would hit is actually uh, something called the tokenization. And, uh, well, we have this long string which has the review, and, but we are talking about, the, about words all this time. So we need to, way to transfer this kind of string to a set of words, and that's actually quite less trivial than, it's, it, it, than it could seem. Uh, so, uh, so, so there are pretty complex ways. There are whole soft, uh, software, uh, the, the software packages, whole Python packages dedicated just to converting strings to, to sequences of words. But we are, gonna, we are gonna use something very simple here. We are just gonna just normalize white spaces. We are gonna throw away all special characters, and then we are just gonna split by spaces. So this is very imperfect. For example, here we would have uh, one word which is uh, you enjoy together, but, but it's all right. In machine learning, one of the things that you learn pretty fast is uh, that it's okay to be imperfect, that uh, the whole thing is just statistics, and if it's a good review, it will have many, many nice, many positive words. And if you miss some because you messed up in this step, it's all right, it's all right. So then what we are gonna do is we can, uh, if, we have, if, we, if we have this list of tokens that we extracted, then this, this Python code, it just it creates exactly this representation it has zeros everywhere except once at, at the places where, where, where the, the words, uh, where there are words which are present in the review. And uh, then what we can do is we can build a neural network. There is a, actually many ways to build machine, to do machine learning in Python for some simpler models. Uh, it's, uh, there is a package, for example, called scikit-learn, which is pretty good. But I chose to, to, to show you Keras, which is a framework for building neural networks, and you can actually use it to build any kind of super complicated state-of-art neural networks for machine translation, for automatic image uh, generating of image captions, or something very, some very advanced stuff. Uh, but uh, it can also be used to, to build very simple models. And its advantage is that it's pretty flexible. So, so I think if you learn some basics of Keras, then, then you can do things like, uh, like uh, take a visual processing neural network and customize it and so on. So, uh, so, so, so in this regard, a neural network is, uh, how do we build a neural network in Keras? Uh, we specify an input of the neural network, which is this bunch of numbers, uh, this list of numbers. When we go into machine learning, we start calling it a vector, but it's just a list. It's just a fancy name for a list. And, uh, and then what we do is we do this dense operation. I'll show that in the next slide. And essentially we do a bunch of, uh, we describe how the neural network looks like, what are the layers uh, for, through which the data, the data flows. And then we, then we specify, uh, then we said, uh, then we instantiate a model. We just say what the input variable of this model is and the output variable of this model is. And then we compile it. 
basically what we say is what we care about in this model. We care about the, the, the accuracy, so, so how close the predicted labels, the, whether it's positive or negative, are to, are to what we know is true. And, uh, and then we, have a, we implement some train method for our mini, mini, mini object, uh, which, uh, which, which, runs our, or which runs the fit function. And what it does is it takes a bunch of those examples and, uh, and, uh, and, and it, it puts, uh, puts them through the neural network and trains it. What training means is we start with a random bunch of coefficients. So each of those, this word has a random number as a coefficient. It can be amazing, uh, the, number, uh, the, 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 the word can be amazing, but the coefficient may be may minus one, it's a bad word. For at the beginning, but what we do during the training, we adjust those coefficients so that the mistake, as, so that the network uh, ma makes as, as, ma as little mistakes as possible. Uh, yeah, so just to show you how the model looks like, sorry that there is evil mathematical character there, it's the only one in, 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 in here, uh, but uh, what we really do is uh, we just, uh, this is, this is essentially the, the input, zero or one, or zero or one, whether the word is present or not. This is the weight. This is the parameter that we are learning. So, so this is for, for each specific, specific example, but those par parameters which we are learning, and then they will stay fixed, and they represent how good or bad each word is. And then we just sum them together. Uh, this time this, this plus this time this, plus this time this, nothing more advanced, nothing more advanced. And then we get a, a random number, and what then we do then is we use some magic mathematical operation which just, uh, which just uh, squashes it between zero and one. So if it's a very high number, it goes very close to one, and if it's a very low, very negative number, it goes very close to, very close to zero. It's called the sigmoid, but that's not so important, actually. And then we get a prediction. So the prediction is either very close to zero or very close to one, uh, typically because ambiguous reviews are actually probably not so, not so common, who knows. And then this is just a bunch of Python code, uh, which uh, loads some data set and so on. I just, uh, uh, actually all those slides are on GitHub, there will be a link again, where you can also get the, get the working example and try it by yourself. And you actually don't need a GPU. This model is so simple. Maybe you heard that to train neural networks, you need to buy a state-of-art gaming GPU uh, for, for $1,000. And uh, uh, that's actually not true at all. For most simple uh, machine learning, it's OK to just do it on your notebook, and it will work. It may be faster on a GPU, uh, on a graphics card, but, 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 but the CPU will do just fine. Only if you are doing machine learning research or something special, you want a GPU, I think. And uh, so when we run this, uh, what the neural network, uh, what the training process does, it goes through all those examples and adjusts the parameters, and then it goes through them again, and further adjusts the parameters, and again, again, it goes through them all, several times so that it really has the chance to, to, to learn everything. And those are those called, so-called epochs, are those passes through the data set. And uh, what we can see here, that the accuracy at the, at the, the first pass it, it is 83%, then, it goes to 90%, and it goes up and up when we are uh, leaving it running. But, uh, so that's pretty good, right? About 90% accuracy, that's pretty, that, that's, that's, uh, so, so that means just using this simple method, just assigning a word weight, positive or negative, to each individual word, and then summing, summing the, the weights of words which are present in the review, we can reach 90% accuracy when determining whether, when a review is positive or negative. I think during my talk, you could have th thought about a lot of counter examples of reviews where this wouldn't work. Like if I say uh, not good in a review, this information is lost here because there is no information that there was a word not before good and so on. So that it, it, it might sound that this couldn't really work well, but it turns out that even such a simple approach is around 90% accuracy. 
And it may be good enough for a lot of, uh, if you are just gonna suggest something to people, for example, this may be perfectly good enough. And it was just a simple weighted sum that anyone can build. Uh, there is one catch here. And uh, the thing is, the neural network, it's, it learns the easy general rules at the beginning, but when we keep it training, it starts to, it tries to, to, to learn more and more difficult concepts, more, more and more uh, difficult things. But if it's not powerful enough to learn them, what it starts doing instead is memorizing things. And that's what happens here, because uh, we are not, here we are measuring on the data we are training on, but we kept aside some data, it's called a validation data set, uh, which we aren't used for tra using for training, but just to measure accuracy on, on, on data, on reviews, the network didn't actually see. And, uh, and that's useful at looking at, okay, then when we, uh, when we put in a new, new, new review that you never saw before, how good will you be? Will you be as good as on the data you trained on? And it turns out if we uh, keep it uh, training uh, for, for, for too long, it's not the case because what it will start doing is it will stop learning those general rules that amazing is a good word and uh, horrible is a bad word. And it will just start memorizing the particular reviews. So if there is a word apple in a good review and a word bicycle in a, in, in a bad review, it will start memorizing that uh, apple is a good word and bicycle is a bad word. And that's ex uh, obviously what we don't want. It's called overfitting. And that's why we have this validation data set. And we then, the, then figure out by watching this how, exactly how long we can, uh, we can leave this running. All right, so yeah, and then we, of course, can put in a random new, random new review. This is a positive one, and we get, a, get out a number. And this is a, the number we get out, and it's pretty close to one, so we can say, okay, this is a positive review, and it would be a good guess by the neural network. So, uh, yeah, if you wanna delve deeper, uh, we had a longer tutorial about this topic uh, on the MLPRA conference, and the slides and all the and the Jupyter notebooks and everything is uh, is on on our GitHub, so you can take a look at that. Uh, and uh, yeah, so what I just wanted to, to 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 convey is that neural networks they aren't magic abstract things m mimicking our brains; uh, they are just mathematical formulas. And all those neural networks that you learn about in the media are actually just very similar um, weighted sums as we had. They, just, uh, they are essentially just a lot of weighted sums stacked on top of each other with some extra mathematical spice, but very little of it actually. Uh, so it's not so magical. You don't need to be afraid of it. And if you are building it, it wasn't so, so, uh, so visible from the slides I, I showed, but, uh, but, uh, but actually 80% of your work isn't in building the neural networks and thinking up of those, but actually dealing with the data and just writing the code uh, which transfers the data to the mathematical form. I think we spent at least half of this talk about how, how do we encode the data mathematically at least, and at least the 50% uh, of, of the code, maybe more, uh, is about just, just transferring, uh, transforming this data. And uh, that's the reality of it. And if it doesn't, you try it and it doesn't work, most likely you just have a bug in those 80% uh, of, uh, of your code which, which uh, deals, with the, with deals with the data. And even if you build a simple model, like just a weighted sum, it can often be, it can often be enough. Uh, I, I, I promised more in the annotation of this talk. I promised that I'll talk about text and I'll talk about pictures. But the trouble with pictures is, uh, well, I decided when I was preparing this talk that I would rather take the time to explain the text part properly than, than try to explain both improperly. And the other thing is that for pictures, actually such simple models aren't quite enough. Uh, because a picture is a much harder kind of data you have just those bunch of colored pixels that you need to extract something from. And so it's not as easy to, uh, uh, as easy to, 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 to explain what's going on. Uh, but uh, luckily, we can cheat uh, in case of pictures. Because there is a lot of other people who already built neural networks which deal with pictures. 
and unlike with text, uh, it's not feasible to build your own, but what's feasible is just download one, just download neural network from the internet, and uh, you have a lot of neural networks which are also pre-trained on a very, very large data set of, of, of images which are categorized by what kind of thing is on the image. Is it a, is it a boat? Is it a, is it a dog? And so on and so on. There is about 1,000 categories. And you can download a pre-trained neural network which can distinguish, given a picture, what's on that picture. And what you can do, the, maybe that's not exactly what you want to do. You want to build a neural network which just detects uh, if it uh, takes, uh, for example, uh, pictures from a webcam and it's trying to guess whether, whether a human is behind the computer based on those images or something like that, right? So you don't really need exactly this, but you, what you can do is uh, you can still take this neural network and you can just tweak it. You can just, for example, use its predictions to build the very simple weighted average model that we, that we showed before for NLP. You can use this exact model to, mm, to, to figure out from the neural, from the bridge neural network predictions uh, uh, what's, the, what's uh, f f uh, the answer that you, that, that you need. There is some code over here, but I will not dwell on it. If you want to take a look at uh, how can you do this, there is a link there. But uh, yeah. Most importantly, if you want to go back to this on this GitHub, you, you will have uh, those slides, but also a script, uh, the, the, the finished Python script that you can run and play around with. Thanks. All right, thank you, Peter. Uh, we do have some questions on Slido. Uh, it should be on slido.com. Uh, put in PyCon CZ there if you want to ask something, that's the best way. Uh, so the first question is, what if the review is, it was awesome, brilliant, superb for those who have no brain? What would be the sentiment here? So the sentiment would be pretty obviously very positive. And yeah, then there is a philosophical question, how many people do actually have a brain? And uh, whether it's actually not a good movie to watch for most people then? Right, <laughs> thanks. Uh, and uh, how can I use curse for anomaly detection in text, like misprints, gram grammar, or logical errors? Hmm. So, anomaly, det uh, anomaly detection is actually uh, one of the more difficult topics in machine learning. So, uh, you have a bunch of things that you can do with machine learning. You can just classify things, like we did here. You have a yes or no, or a bunch of categories that you can classify, so you can classify into. That's the easiest kind of problem. Then you have so-called regression problems, where you have some input, and you need to, to, uh, to, to estimate some kind of numerical value about it. Like, for example, if you were trying to automatically grade homeworks with marks from one to five, then, and, or some continuous, continuous mark in between. That's uh, more difficult. And uh, anomaly detection is one of those very, uh, very hard problems. There are some packages which are prepared for this, but uh, often what it, the easiest thing that you can do is uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can try to predict the next thing and then look whether the prediction matches. In this sense, for example, um, you can try a Keras model, which has, uh, which gets, uh, which gets, uh, which gets. Uh, for example, uh, for each word, it gets the rest of the sentence, and the Keras model is trying to 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 predict predict the missing word, which word is missing, from 5,000 alternatives, and either it's, and then you look at the actual word, and either it's a likely word. And then in that case, it's all right. It was something plausible. Or maybe it's a very unlikely word. And in that case, it might be an anomaly. So that's one simple way to approach it. But you need to think about those a bit, a bit, a bit, uh, a bit uh, complicated ways to go about, those, uh, about this task of anomaly detection. Right, thank you. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? No one. All right, so thank you, Peter. And I'm sure you'll be around for if anybody has more questions about this topic. Sure. All right. Thanks.